is up guys excited to get into this one today it's been a minute since i've made a trap beat for you guys and you've been asking for smino now this is as much a look at smino as it is monty booker who often produces for smino's tracks we've got a lot to cover let's jump into it Right, so Smino with a new album out in 2022 called Love for Rent. Smino with five million monthly listeners and on a lot of Smino's discography, especially on this new album, we're hearing a lot of Monty Booker, a phenomenal producer who I know you guys are familiar with. So let's dive straight into it. I've started our project off with a sample. It's in D sharp minor and I've thrown Lifeline console on it just to brighten it up with the preamp and add a little bit of saturation. And I've rolled off the lows with the EQ8 there. Without these plugins, it sounds like this. Let's add the plugins. It's just a little bit more saturated, a little bit brighter. And I've warped this sample just a little bit so it's not super quantized and that it lands with my kick drums, which we'll come to in just a little bit. Now, another thing that I like to do when I pull in a sample is just right click this sample and go convert harmony to new MIDI track. It's pretty accurate, but what you want to do once you've got that harmony is double click on it and then change your scale to the key of your sample. So D sharp minor. You want to go through this and just delete any of those kind of slip notes that shouldn't be there or anything that falls outside your scale. We're looking at those purple notes. So we can see that this note here falls outside the scale. We just want to get rid of that. Now, the reason that I do this is it's great for adding a new layer to your sample, kind of thickening up that texture a little bit or creating a B section to your song. Maybe you want to go from these long legato notes to something that's a little bit more staccato, maybe a different timbre altogether. I wanted the chords to sound a little bit more full. So I applied that MIDI section to a serum patch that I have here. And this is what the chords look like. notes might not be exactly the same as the sample above but they are in keeping with our key just a little bit of light eq taking out some of the muddy notes here and then two compressors one compressor set to the sample so when the sample initially comes in it just kind of ducks the volume of that chord pad a little bit and another side chain compressor set to the kick anytime the kick plays again that side chain is going to take effect and just duck our chord pad a little bit and then a line delay so it sets itself a little bit wider than the main sample which is going to take up the central space so we could have a combination like this And as I said, you could create new sections to your song. So this would be fantastic having more of a pad sound for something like the intro to your track. So I actually took those chords and threw them down here, as you can see on this track called Flute Alt. And one of the things I realized Smino uses a lot is the OP1. And he let slip in a live stream the website op1.fun. This is super cool and super free. You just want to create yourself a free account and then head to patches and you'll find all of these OP1 packs and patches. Some of them are drums and some of them are more kind of patch sounds. Some are nicer than others. So I like to go to sort, most download and search again, and we'll find sounds like this. Once you've found a sound that you like, all you need to do is go over to the sound title and then hit download. Once you've downloaded it, you can just drop it straight into a new MIDI track and it will convert it to a sampler instrument. I wanted to go with this flute instrument. As you can see, once I had it in the sampler, I created a loop section. When it hits that second playhead, it's gonna move backwards and then forwards. So you want a small crossfade. I wanted to make this a little bit more unique. So I went into pitch and oscillation, detuned it by five cents, set the spread to 32 and the time on portamento to 111 milliseconds. This pitch is also going from minus 24 semitones very quickly on a decay rate of 56.8 milliseconds. And that gives it a really unique sound alongside the filter, which I've just increased the attack of so it's not coming in super, super sharp. Really like that sound. EQ8 just to take out those muddy notes and boost some of the highs a little bit. Valhalla Vintage Verb mixed with Valhalla Super Massive to give it a little bit of delay and kind of that ping pong sound. And then Shaper Box 3. So I was feeling a little bit lazy, but just like before, creating a little bit of a bounce, a little bit of sidechain action, a line delay. So it's again wider in the mix. Such a nice sound. I'm taking that last chord and just bringing it in a little bit prematurely so it doesn't come into the mix out of the blue.
It's a nice element to add to the second half of the track or the second half of your eight bar loop. Now this is one of the few tracks where I first went with the sample and then the bass line. Bass lines I normally save for the end of my production and that's just me. But I went straight in with the 808, finding a nice 808 patch for Serum and then just boost in some of the harmonics, add in the Waves R bass. You know I love this plugin, just helps pull it out of small speakers. Little bit of limiter because it was a really loud 808 and then utility to set this 808 in mono. And you can see the pattern here. Here. Keeping it quite simple and sporadic as well. Now in the second half, we're just switching up the bass line a little bit. Keep the listener guessing, add a little bit of nuance to your track, but still keeping it quite sporadic. Now at this point, I was really happy with the track. But I just wanted something to fill these little gaps here. Now normally we would have a vocalist in here of course, but sometimes you hear these nice glassy melodies or chords coming from Monty Booker's production. So we're gonna add just that. And what I've got is again, that same OP1 flute that you heard before, this sample playing out a little bit longer with the Valhalla Vintage Verb and then this crazy EQ. This is being applied by the LFO. You could use something like Shaper Box 3 as well. The rate is set to 1 8th and then you're dialing in the percentages. The lower the percentage, the further left your EQ is gonna go the higher the percentage, the further to the right it's gonna go. So that rate is set to 1 8th, and then we've just set it to a triangle wave. That will change the sound from something like this to something like this. So it's kind of taking the transient away from the initial pluck sound. And then I just have some ping pong delay at the very end there. I've used a similar trick on the bridge or middle eight to this track, just to create a new section. We're using it with the sample. The LFO is set to up this time and the rate is set to quarter notes. It changes the sample from this to this. There's just a little bit more movement there, right? With that new section, I've also added a new 808 pattern and a new 808 sound. This 808 is a little bit less buzzy, not as saturated and has a slower attack. Sounding like this, you might need headphones. You can see that I've taken out any kind of fill notes. So these are all just legato notes playing with the chords this time. But we've kept that OP1 flute. Super lovely, right? Let me tell you about one more lovely thing before we get to Monty Booker's signature drum sound. Oh, something a little bit different today. Not DistroKid, but DistroVid. You can access it through the DistroKid website. DistroVid, brought to you by DistroKid, will help you get your music onto Vivo, Tidal, and more very, very easily, and you would spend way more time and money trying to do that off of your own back. It's a great way to visually expand your musical repertoire in an artistic way and pull in an even wider audience. If you're not quite there yet, I understand. Why don't you start by just getting your music out there? You can use the link for DistroKid in the description below. You'll get 7% off your first year. Let's get back to the video. All right, so the drums, you want a really hard hit and kick. I've gone with like a murder sample kick, just rolling off the lows with that EQ8 there and adding the envelope follower. I think you've seen this trick before. If not, I have a short on it. Envelope follower, assign that on the kick drum track and then hit map and bring it up to your 808 track. You can see here with node two, anytime the kick drum plays, it's gonna pull that 808 down. And I've just selected 45.5 Hertz on the frequency there because that's around the same frequency where the subby part of my kick drum is gonna hit. So we've got a really hard hitting kick drum and that's playing a nice pattern that's landing on a lot of the downbeats of the 808 and then just playing some filler notes as well. Snare sound, really short and sharp. You can use a rim shot sound as well. If you're using a rim, I would take off any of the decay. You can do that just by chopping the sample down or double clicking it, hitting warp, beats, forward transients and bringing that envelope down. Just a little bit of EQ in that and then putting the snare in mono. I've got another snare here taken from the same sample pack just to keep it kind of in keeping. And this one I have warped as you can see here, taking the envelope down to 18. The kick and snare pattern along with the sample is gonna sound like this.
So a couple of things that you want to do from there is add a hi-hat. I've chosen just the 808 hi-hat from Ableton's packs and I've just taken that start point down to the middle area. That's going to take it from a really loud hi-hat to something that's a little bit sharper and a little bit more quiet. And I'm just using the EQ8 just to roll off some of those super harsh notes. But as you can see here, we've got some pitch stuff going on as well. So if we double click on that hi-hat, you can see that we're just playing that middle C and then we're drifting it up on these kind of triplet notes. I like to pitch some of the hi-hats down a semitone every now and then just to create a sense of realism. And this pattern changes over the course of eight bars as well. Sometimes going up, sometimes going down. Really easy way to create hi-hats. And then I've just got an open hi-hat from Sunny here and another open hi-hat from Splice here as well. So that's creating some nice differentiation there. We've got the Lex Trap Crash at the bottom. Lovely little pattern. Now, something that you probably want to do at the end is just kind of treat those drums a little bit. So in 14 group here, you can see that I've got Lifeline Expanse and that's adding a little bit of bit crushing, a little bit of saturation and some width to the percussive elements of my drums, not the kick and snare. And you can see here that I've got this send and receive compensator here. This is a free device from Max for Life. And the Lifeline Expanse was just adding a little bit of volume, maybe three decibels of volume to my drums. So I just turn that on, let it measure the difference. There you can see the volume that it's coming in at and then the volume that it's losing over this side. The last thing I did was just add a little bit of latency in milliseconds to my drum group and my snares here to give it a more humanistic sound. Monty Booker's drums are often quite lazy. They've got a little bit of a bounce to them. So you want to add that kind of real life drummer feel to your trap drums as well. It's going to make it feel a little bit more realistic inside the track. Let's give it everything one last listen together. And if you vibe what you heard today, do consider hitting that subscribe button. It greatly helps out the channel. Over at the Patreon, I've got these stems, including the MIDI chords if you want to use them in your own songs as well. It's been great to see you and I'll see you guys next time.